This is episode 99 of the Wilderness Liberals podcast. On this episode, my guest is Lee Miller. Lee is the Region 2 Lower Mainland Chair for Backcountry Hunters and Angler. He's a good buddy of mine. He's a dad. He's a hunter. He's a all-around awesome dude. You guys will enjoy this conversation. This podcast is brought to you by Kafaru International. Kafaru makes absolutely bomb-proof gear that is second to none. Kafaru.net, folks. There are a few groups in North America that put boots to the ground, like the Wild Sheep Society of BC. Contrary to popular belief, Wild Sheep Society BC isn't just about sheep. The majority of their projects benefit a variety of ungulates and other wildlife. Check them out at www.wildsheepsociety.com. Great folks over there. I'm a Monarch member. You should be too. And as always, go check out our friends over at Just Shooting Arrows. Just Shooting Arrows is BC's premier archery shop. Yeah, it's been uh, a crazy uh, 24 hours, man. It's been up a couple of early days getting up. Yeah, that's what you said. You were uh, chasing sturgeon yesterday, right? I was. I was, yeah. My cousin's down from the Yukon. He was down accepting an award for some journalism that he did up there and uh, seen an opportunity to get him his first sturgeon. So took him out on a sturgeon boat yesterday and his first one was like a five and a half foot. It was bananas. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's wicked. You're, are, are you're loving that gig, hey? Uh, dude, my job is awesome, man. Like, I get to do some pretty awesome stuff. And yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's it's a job with ups and downs, but the the highs are super high, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you get to do some pretty rad stuff. Yeah, it's and the folks there are fa- fa- like phenomenal too. Like, I'll, I know some of the guys you work with now. They're just mm-hmm. everybody's great. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's awesome. It's awesome where you, uh, you know, you, like you've got a wealth of information there, right? Like a whole library of guys who have fished all over BC and further out, right? So you ever need advice, you can just ask a question and then there's always someone that can, that can give you the right, uh, right info, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, Pacific angler in Vancouver for everybody listening along here. Awesome dudes. Um, Lee introduced me to his, his buddy there, Matt to Matt Sharp. And he's just been, uh, taking me under his wing in the fishing realm <laughs> too, which is great. So yeah, I love how you're calling him the Jedi. I think, he, <laughs> I think he's loving that too, but no, those guys are rad, man. And, and you know, that's, that's the retail team there at the store. And the other guys that I work with, I, I run all of the guides for Pacific Angler. So I run the guide and operations side. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've, I'm surrounded by awesome guides as well with tons of information out on the salt water. And then we, we've got a sturgeon boat that's just about to launch. Um, we're just launching that business now as well. So that's going to be up and running for summer. Uh, and, it, and it's dope, man. It's like 20 minutes from Vancouver and you're hauling on these dinosaurs. It's, it's unbelievable. That's wicked. That's so mm-hmm. wicked. You've so, done it before, right? I haven't. No, man. I've never done yeah. it. Oh, my God, dude. We need, to, uh, we need to get you out on the boat for sure. Yeah, I know Sky and all the boys did it for uh, our, our our buddy Foss uh, mm-hmm. um, Stag or whatever, but I I didn't I didn't end up going on it. But no, I I got to do it. I can't wait. It'll be awesome. Yeah, I will hook you up, man. Yeah, right on. Um, and Lee, so you're also now the uh, Region Two Chair for BHA, right? I am. Yeah. I've been at that for a year and a half now. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I made it sound like big news. <laughs> no, no. I, like, I kind of work in the background, man. You know, like it's um, BHA for me has been, you know, it's been a wild ride considering I only started hunting myself when I moved to Canada back in 2016. So mm-hmm. can I come in and it kind of feels like imposter syndrome, you know, running this <laughs> organization, but uh, we, yeah, I mean, it, it's been great. We, we, we do tons of cool stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, um, I mean, BHA is a, a powerhouse when it comes to, um, uh, engagement, you know, like, like BHA has that, um, just on complete lockdown, you know, the, the, the new hunter and the, you know, the people under 40 category. 
For sure. Yeah. And I, I mean, I wouldn't take it just at that as well. We do have a lot of like older, uh, older members as well, but for the most part as a lot of younger guys. And there's, there's a few reasons, you know, why BHA appeals to a lot of the new hunters that are coming in. And I think that that comes down to the team here that we have on region two. We, our focus is that we want to build a community where people feel that they can come and ask silly questions and not get, you know, torn apart. Yeah. Which and is huge. Yeah. And, and that all stems me like that comes from me, man. I, that was me. I was that, you know, gangly new kid at the, the first ever pint night, you know, not really knowing who to talk to or what questions to ask, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's awesome. Like it's, it's cool that we do these events to, uh, specifically to get new hunters into the sport and then, you know, build our community. Yeah. That's wicked, man. Um, B- BHA is one of those ones that that sometimes gets um how do I say it uh it gets like tangled up in some of the stuff that happens with uh I don't know the mothership or or do I call it corporate BHA or headquarters BHA and mm-hmm. um correct me if I'm wrong here but like e- each region is kind of completely independent and has its kind of own um uh, autonomy to do whatever you guys want. Right. Yeah. I mean, within a framework, right? Like as long as, as long as we can, uh, put forward, uh, projects and act in a way that, you know, that's consistent with the BHA model, uh, down South, we can for sure. Like we we do get a lot of autonomy. Like we only started up in 2014 and it's really BC, Alberta, and there's a chapter in the Yukon and there's only three in Canada right now. Yeah. So, BHA HQ, you know, they're focused on the states. They have a ton of issues that they're working on. You know, uh, all, all the states, almost every state has its own BHA chapter now. So the HQ down there, like they're awesome. Like they give us some support and it's, and it's good. But for, for Canada, I mean, we're really just getting started here, you know, um, we're in the process of getting our not for profit status in Canada. And once we have that, you know, like things are going to change massively we'll start having you know the finance the financial backing to take on bigger projects and more government and stuff but i mean it's it's good it's good uh in a sense that we have you know like when i'm chatting with a new member that wants to come on board and i'm saying hey we've got fifty six thousand members across north america like that's you know it doesn't make us sound like a a small outfit you know Mm -hmm. how many members um, how many members are in bc uh it's uh we're, we're kind of trying to determine that now like so pre-covid i think we were at about 1600 um we lost a few memberships just because we weren't doing any events and stuff and that's our main driver for memberships yeah um you know so and because money was tight for everyone through covid you know like some people didn't renew so mm-hmm. we're uh we're, we've got a meeting uh june 3rd i'm heading up to Kelowna to meet with all the regional leads for uh bc Mm-hmm. We're all flying in and driving up to meet each other. And then we're going to really, you know, get into the membership numbers and break it down. I don't think it would be hard for us to get back to that point, though. You know, 14, no. 1,400, 1,500 members um, for BC specifically. We've only got a, a small following compared to some of the other organizations out there. But it's yeah. good. I like, I like it that way because if <sighs> we've got a small concentration of members, you know, and they're, you know, a particular... Uh, kind of like hunter conservationist kind of people, yeah. and uh, then I'm I'm totally fine with that, you know. Yeah, for sure. Is an, an active group is uh, a lot better than a than a stagnant group, right? Of course, yeah, definitely. Um, so what, what's what is what is so for us region two cats? What's BHA all about? Yeah, so BHA is uh, you know we're we're. We're conservationists first, hunters at a second, but what we're focused on is the community in itself. So uh, building the next generation of of hunters the right way and passing on information and and putting on events that allow information to be shared with others. So that's our jam, man. I mean, that's, you know, we we do change up 
things quite a lot. Like a lot of our regions uh, and the leads have different strengths, right? So the guys over in uh, in the Kootenays, they're like they're they're on a bunch of boards, you know, for different wildlife uh, conservation programs uh, and committees, advisory boards, stuff like that. Um, for us down here in Region Two, like we're really good at putting on awesome events, right? Like we, we put on some kick-ass events, and that's our focus. And then some other guys, you know, are, are around the province are really good at creating, you know, writing and stuff like that. So yeah, man, I mean, there's something for everyone here in BHA. That's sure. great. Yeah. And, and then, I mean, what is like, um, I'll, I'll ask the, the like mo- mo- most high level overview question, like what's BHA's goal? BHA's goal is to enable access. Okay. That's, that's the big one is, uh, enable, enable an access for, uh, for people to get into the sport. Nice. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's awesome. And I mean, um, can you speak to, um, so like a, a lot, a lot of guys in like, like I was saying earlier about how people get, uh, you know, our regional BHA tangled up with the kind of some of the corporate or headquarters drama. Um, you know, it's like, it's like one of those things that, um, you read about it online or whatever, and it gets a little bit confusing. Um, I just really want to kind of hammer that point home. So guys know that there is a little bit of, um, Oh, I don't know. There's some space between us and that kind of, kind of stuff. Sometimes I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard one to kind of, to explain, right? Like the hard one to lock down. I mean, yeah. When it comes to, when it comes to BHA HQ, like they do awesome work down there, and mm-hmm. I think we wouldn't be in a bad position if in five or ten years time, you know, we could compete with the with our HQ on a on that level here in Canada. Yeah, you know, and um, I know that you know some people like it rubs some people the wrong way because it it seems like we're this kind of big cheesy, uh, you know, like. I think that's the only word I can say is, is, is cheesy in some cases, you know, and you get the emails and stuff, but at the end of the day, man, I mean, it's, it's who benefits, right? Like if, if you're looking to purchase a membership, right? Like your BHA money stays in BC, mm-hmm. like stays up here in region two. Like we use that to buy trash bags and rubber gloves to go and do cleanups. You know, yeah. we use that, like we just, we just spent $5,000 on trail cameras. We're, we're doing a, a trail camera project with, uh, Simon Fraser University, BCIT, and a company called Wildcam. Yeah. You know, like that's what your money's being spent on. So when it comes to, when it comes to looking at BHA through that lens, like wh- who's really benefit? And then the answer is, you know, the wildlife. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, like I've gotten to know Yuli and like, I kind of, you and I think very, very, very similarly. Um, and like, I have a, I have a ton of confidence in, in, in what you're doing and, and what's going on over there. And, um, and I, the reason I asked that, that question the way I did is just like, you know, you see stuff online and it's like, you're kind of like, uh, I don't know. It kind of, kind of some stuff from the headquarters stuff, I think leaves a sour taste in a lot of guys' mouths. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I, I just kind of wanted to hammer the point home that that's not what's going on here locally. Right. For sure. Yeah, no, definitely, man. And I would say to anyone that's, that's kind of feels like that and, you know, they're seeing too much of that stuff from down South and want to see more, you know, BC or Canadian specific content. Like that is no man. We're very much a volunteer led organization. Yeah. Like none of us, none of us get paid, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. yeah let, let us know what you want to see in BHA and we'll, you know, we'll make it happen. Yeah. I think the other thing I, I would, I would probably urge guys to do is if you have a specific question or concern, reach out, right? Yeah, exactly, man. A lot, a lot of our projects that come up come from our members, you know, like especially when it comes to conservation issues or access issues is they'll bring it to our attention and, you know, we'll, we'll help them to champion that project. That's awesome. You know, so, so you, yeah. did, so you just mentioned your guys' trail cam project. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about some projects. What's going on? What's BHV doing? Yeah, for sure. So for this year specifically, I mean, a, a big focus for us is, is just putting on some more events where we where we can get members back engaged with each other, like uh, unite the community in a way. Yeah. But there's some cool uh, there's some cool conservation projects going on as well, like this trail cam 
uh, project that kicked off on Saturday just past there. The first uh, lot of cameras got deployed. Um, we're working with a master's student to do a study on uh, black ta- uh, black-tailed deer uh, habitat selection uh, in a disturbed versus a non-disturbed landscape. So they're putting some cameras out in uh, in golden ears, which would be the non-disturbed landscape, and then we're uh, we're going to put some cameras out in some spots that have been kind of densely logged and stuff like that. Oh, cool! Yeah, so that that one's interesting. I mean, we've run a couple of projects like this before in the past with uh, with the BC Parks guys and. Um, it's been pretty successful, but this is just the pilot program. Eventually we would have a network of, you know, a hundred cameras or so that eventually would get put out as part of these camera trapping studies. And we would be working with a student every single year. Oh, that's Um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd move it around the province as well. So that's cool. Uh, how many, how many cameras went out on that one? Uh, I think four cameras went out. We've got another four to go out on another week. So this project is going to be running every, you know, every two to four weeks. We're going to have people out either deploying cameras, uh, maintaining cameras, collecting SD cards, stuff like that, and then helping us submit the data as well. Very cool. Yeah, yeah that, so, that's that's awesome. And I mean that the 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 master student there, he's kind of laid out the protocol for how to keep it all uh, all good, clean data. Hey. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the first, uh, the first one that they did on Saturday there was more of a training for some of the core members that are going to be, uh, taking people out in the field, uh, later on in the project and they'll teach them how to deploy the cameras and, uh, collect the data and stuff. So I would say anybody that's listening that might want to get involved in that project, I mean, we're going to, we're going to be running those, uh, days out pretty frequently and it's open to anyone you know we'll give you the camera location you go pick up the sd card and stuff it's a boots on the ground effort and you know we we need more more people to get involved for sure cool that's fun what else is going oh yeah a lot of the rest of it's events man like apart from the you know like 7b proposal stuff and the you know conservation uh lobbying more yep. you know like for for reason two specifically we've got a fly casting course coming up next month which is with uh our good buddy matt there <laughs> yeah um yeah we're doing our wild game tailgate there in july which is always a super fun event i don't know if you've ever been to one of those have you bro i don't try i try not to leave my house <laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah. I, sh- I should i really should like like i i've never even been to a wild sheep society event i've never been to a bha event i've never yeah no i try to i should, should yeah I really you should, should definitely come to that one for sure sky always comes to that one i know he's he's um, he's a social butterfly yeah, 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 definitely. But no, that one, uh, that one, that one's usually every, every July we do that. Uh, we have a big kind of potluck and everybody brings like a wild game dish and then you share your food with, you know, however many people show up. I think the most we've had at one of those events has been like 50 people or so. <laughs> you That's know, awesome. it's, it's a cool place to try, uh, try some game that you've never tried before. You know, mm-hmm. like that, I had my first ever cougar slaters at, at one of those and those were adults. Yeah, no kidding. That's wicked. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I I love that you guys are, you know, building the community and getting more people involved and kind of um, teaching people how to kind of get into the conservation space. Hey. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. And, and, and I think it needs to be prefaced that for reason two, like we try and leave the politics out of it. You know, we just, yeah. you know, we we just want to build that community and, and kind of make it keep the fun in the sport, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's huge. That, yeah. That's, that's, that's so huge. Um, what, what else is going on? You must have some hunting and stuff going on here in the, in the near future. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few trips planned. More fishing this year than anything though, man. Just given the, you know, the, the crash course to BC fishing when I started working with PA, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this weekend I'm heading, uh, I'm heading up into the interior to some lake fishing, which is going to be fun. And then, uh, I've got my deer camp in September and then I might be going on a two week elk camp in, uh, in October as well. Oh, that'll be wicked. That'll yeah. be super awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was my first ever hunt was a, a two week in the Kootenays. Uh, <laughs> no, no way. Oh, I did. It was bananas. It was bananas. That's wicked. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was actually, uh, I got invited. It was my, my wife's cousin because she's got family here. And now uh, they, he invited me out with his buddies. There was originally supposed to be like nine dudes going to this, this camp. And then it ended up only being me and, 
two of his friends that I'd only met like a couple of times, but we had a great time, man. We were like stomp, stomping through hills. And that was back when I didn't know anything right or didn't have any of the gear. So I like walked in with like a 65 pound pack, you know, and <laughs> you know, a bunch of stuff that I didn't need. And that was a good, a good intro to DC hunting for sure. How'd you get into hunting? What, what brought you into, into hunting? I've always been outdoorsy, man. Like I was a super outdoorsy kid, right? Like I spent a lot of time, um, you know, kind of learning bushcraft and stuff and watching like shows like Ray Mears and, uh, uh, you know, Bear Grylls and stuff like that when I was a kid. I was yeah. that weird kid at school. I was always like out building shelters in the woods when my friends were going to the mall and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I always wanted to get into hunting and, uh, you know, I did a little bit of like small game hunting back home and birds and stuff, but never big game. So it was big game when I, when I moved here, it was definitely on the list pretty quick. You know, as soon as I could get my firearms license and do my core, I did it, you know, that's awesome. And yeah. then, and so did you have somebody helping you get going or what? Uh, I did. I did. And I didn't like, I got a lot of the information that I got came from BHA and it was funny. Like I, I'd been watching meat year for a bit and I, I, I was taking my dog for a walk locally here. And I ran into a guy that was wearing a first light jacket, Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I'm going to go talk to that guy. Well, the dogs are messing around in the park and it, and that guy was Nick Chi, the guy uh, that runs reliable gun in Vancouver. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so we were chatting away and he said, you know, if you're looking to get into, he's like, you should go check out BHA. And then I went to my first pint night, was on my own there. I started chatting with, uh, you know, Chris Prin and Jenny and some of the guys that are, that are around here. And yeah, like, you know, just, you know, the rest is history almost. That's awesome. Yeah. that yeah. Nick from Reliable is super involved in the community. Hey. Nick is like one of the best dudes in BC for sure. He's super supportive of BHA. Like he's always helping us out, you know, with sponsorships for events and stuff and getting us firearms and, uh, a genuine, a genuinely nice guy as well. Everybody in his store is, you know, like I don't, I think reliable gun has the best customer service I've ever seen in any store, you know? Yeah. Um, you guys just did a cool like uh shoot your first gun day that i think sky took his his son to yeah it was super cool he brought finn out for it yeah so we we wanted to put on an event where uh we could kind of facilitate the transfer of skill from parents to their kids or you know older people to younger people and um reliable gun gave us all the 22s uh for the event yeah. So we, we booked out the range at, at the Port Coquitlam range there and, uh, Silver Core were there providing some instruction for us. Awesome. Reliable gun were there. You know, they gave us some firearms for it. Yeah. We got, we had, a, we had about 30 people there, man. It was, it was awesome. And now we're probably going to be running that event every few months, uh, kind of moving forward. That's so wicked. I will, yeah. def- I will definitely have my eldest daughter out for that at some point. Yeah. 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 Um, that's cool. So that's the, some of the kind of, excuse me here. Uh, sorry. I'm dealing with a kind of a throat situation. Um, so that's the kind some of the kinds of events that you guys are putting on. Hey. Yeah, definitely. And if, um, if anybody was interested in like finding out more, feel free to like either add us on Instagram. It's backcountry hunters BC. We post all of our events up there. Um, yep. Or they can find me at Western Gilly on Instagram as well and ping me a message. I'd be more than happy to kind of chat you through what we've got coming up. And then also if you've got a pro- if you've got an event that you'd like to see or something that you think is super cool, like I'd love to facilitate that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I love how accessible it is too, right? Like that mm-hmm. that's that's sort of the um you know, the thing that I love about what you're doing, the thing that has always worked for me with, um, wild sheep is like when, when I, when I, even before we had this podcast, when I would send a message, somebody would get back to me right away. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, um, without naming names here, there's a lot of conservation organizations in BC that you can't, you can't get a hold of a human. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, a major factor that you guys are, actual boots on the ground dudes where where we live and actually having these conversations with folks 
Yeah, man, definitely. And uh, I think you're totally right. I mean, when it comes to, you know, memberships for the year, most of, we got a lot of crossover, right? Like generally BHA members are also wild sheep guys or they'll have a Ducks Unlimited membership, you know? Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, we find that if you're, you know, you need to be inclusive and that, that includes financially as well, right? Like you, you know, the new guy that's getting into it isn't, you know, yeah, he probably doesn't want to spend, you know, $12,000 on gear, you know, and a mountain tough training program, you know, so you can go out and steal your honey hole, right? Like you need to, you need to be inclusive of, uh, you know, everybody to come and, and give them the opportunity to do so, you know, come along and be part of that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you hear the argument made all the time that there's, there's too many hunters in the hills and yada, yada, yada. It's just like, I, I, I don't, I mean, I personally don't see it. I kind of think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of power in numbers. And I think like, um, if hunters are coming up the r right way, that's just more, more conservationists, you know? That's it, man. Your voice is louder. Right. That's the, that's the, the big one, you know, everybody's not going to go into the same spot and I'm sure, you know, the, the spot that you hunted when you first started, you know, going, then, you know, are you still hunting there now? Probably not, right? Like <laughs> no, you're, probably, no. you're probably going a little bit further, you know, and I don't think, uh, I don't think that you need to be worried about too many hunters in the field. Like where I hunt, I don't see that. You know, I don't, I don't uh, yeah, I don't see folks. I, yeah. I've, I ran into like, I think one dude ever in my elk spot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but I, I'm not, I'm not saying give them your spot. I'm just saying, you know, give them some, you know, tips and tricks to get into it and then let them figure it out themselves. Yeah. You know, I think both of us, we might, we, we come from the same, um, the same kind of background, right? Like starting as an adult and trying to go from, um, being outdoorsy. Cause I'm the same as you. I grew up you know, camping and mm -hmm. fishing and hiking and dirt biking and all this kind of stuff. But I wasn't hunting, right? And skipped a generation in my family. My dad mm -hmm. wasn't into it. Um, and coming as a, coming into it as an adult, I've said this before lots is it's like, you're kind of trying to wade through, um, bullshit and, and confusion and like, where do I even start? Okay. I've got my core. Now what do I do? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. And all, all of this stuff. Right. And you have somebody to kind of show you like, Hey, this is sign. This is how you read sign. It's mm -hmm. huge. For sure. For sure, man. And Hey, like the, the first ever hunt that I ended up going on, like I got to go on it because I said, to, like, I found out that these guys were going on this big hunting trip. And I said, Hey, like I will come, I will come to the camp. I will be camp chef. You know, I'll help you with packouts. Like I just want to learn. Yeah, you know, that's the right way. That's the right way to get to learn or get and get involved. You know, absolutely. Not messaging someone. You know, if you go on the fa on the Facebook hunting and fishing page, you, say, <laughs> you know, where should I go hunting? You're going to get torn apart. You know? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, man. Um, well, that's the whole thing too. And like when you first start hunting, it's just like you're just just like if you don't know what deer habitat looks like or elk habitat or bear habitat or whatever, you just like. The province is so big, right? It's just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I do think the trick is to just get out there, but it, it's so, it's so important to have some mentorship or some guidance, right? Yeah, definitely. But yeah, getting out, getting out in the field, like even just on your own and looking, you know, what, like sussing out what you're looking for and what you're not looking for as well. Like field time is way more valuable than sitting at home, you know, on the computer. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. Um, so does, does BHA do some mentorship type stuff too? Uh, we, we do, but more, um, more in a sense that, you know, if you get actively involved in the community, that stuff just kind of naturally drifts towards you or the opportunities kind of come towards you anyway, right? Like you'll do it through building friendships and stuff. And we are trying to work on putting together like a kind of fixed mentorship program. Yeah. We, we just want to make sure that if we're going to be doing that on a bigger scale, that the mentors that we're putting in place are the right mentors. Yeah. You know? That totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I'd love to see it eventually, you know, like if, if there is anybody that wanted to get more involved and, and learn, like even for me, like I would love to find a mentor who could teach me how to duck hunt, right? Like <laughs> you got one. His name's yeah, Sky. I know, right? I know. Oh, but, man. But that's it. Like, kind of, we want to build a system around it so that it works and it's, uh, so it's sustainable, you know? Yeah, totally. Totally. You know, it's, it's like, I think, um, I think, 
guys sort of mix up mentorship and somebody handing you a spot like they're of course. They're, they're not the same thing mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's it's just giving somebody the tools to be successful on their own right yeah yeah and and that's the biggest question man when it comes to hunting you know like the one thing that we hear the most is where should i go where should i go where should i go and, you know generally my answer to that question is is you know learn how to e-scout and then you're good, you know, at least give you an idea, learn to do some East scouting, spend some summer days out checking out that area for the fall, you know, like doing your own scouting, Yeah, uh, you know, spend some time developing the skill on how we pick our spots. Yeah, totally. You know, spend, and then, spend time in that country when you're not hunting. For sure, man. And then, you know, if you are looking for, you know, somewhere quick or a quick spot to give somebody, if you've got a buddy that's asking, I mean, send all the newbies to one place, right? Let them battle <laughs> out for the bear, <laughs> you know? That's funny. There's, <laughs> uh, there's a couple dudes on, I'm not really a big Facebook guy, but I, I, I do have a Facebook account and I am on some of those groups and it's funny. Regularly they pop up in my feed, you know, a guy asking for a spot for this or a spot that, and everybody always says the same place. I'm not going to say it on here, but it is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. That's not region nine, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's in region three. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny. I killed my first deer there just coincidentally. <laughs> yeah. And that's it, man. And that's, that is the, I think if it's the spot that I'm thinking of, it's the same spot that I went to when I first started hunting, you know, and I didn't see shit, you oh, know. Oh, really? But, this yeah. spot's actually good. This spot's a migration corridor and they give it oh, out. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean those those spots are good for those guys, right? Like where where we're hunting, when you know when you're moving on from you know when you're looking for those kind of you know big boars and you know big thick four point mealies, like you're yeah. going you're going further than those spots, you know. So I'm pro- I'm probably not going to go back and hunt those spots that I hunted in the way back in the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, it's funny, man. It's it's, it, it's there's so much productive country here. It's crazy. Yeah, like we're super blessed here in BC, man. Like you have so much good country, like so many great species that you can hunt in in fairly decent abundance as well. Yeah. You killed a nice deer last year. I did, man. I did a, I did both a deer and a bear in, in uh, a couple of days. It was Woo. crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did a, a big four point muley and uh, I also shot uh, a super nice color phase bear. It wasn't... Um, wasn't a huge one but nice bear and some good Ian. it was a meat bear nice um but yeah it was it was crazy and that was uh that was hunting a new spot for us that we had kind of scouted out as well that's cool uh like a like a backpack hunt yeah yeah well we, we had a, we had a truck camp but we were um we were kind of hiking out every day and oh, uh, awesome. coming back at night so it was a bit more relaxed i mean that was uh it was it was kind of a chance for me even just last year having a new baby right yeah like yeah, to, yeah to get out you kind of need to cap you you feel that pain but you need to oh, i relate <laughs> yeah take those opportunities when you can but yeah no it was a, a quick one but a productive one for sure yeah that's great man yeah there's yeah. there's nothing wrong with the truck camp like a truck camp to me is uh I mean, it might be my favorite way to hunt because there's a lot of country you can access within hiking distance of your truck every day you know yeah, for sure, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't bash on anybody, you know, that is, uh, that is, you know, tr- hunting from like a truck camp or a base camp or whatever. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, you need to do what's enjoyable to you to keep you engaged in the sport. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You exactly, know? man. I'm, I'm, I feel the exact same way. I don't care what weapon or how you do it as long as you're having fun and uh, being ethical, right? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. And we had, we had lots of opportunity. It was crazy because the spot where we went to, like, it was, it was heavy with traffic, you know, like lots oh, no. of old guys, lots of old guys on quads and, you know, like <laughs> big fifth wheeler setups in the bush. And you're just like, you know, how long are you staying for? Larry Honda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you know, like we, we had been chatting with those guys and as, as things go on, you know, they kind of stop and nod on, in the truck as you know, you, as you're on your way somewhere and Hey, do you have any luck? No, but I've seen this, seen this kind of thing, you know? And yeah. I think in the whole week that we were there, the only, uh, the only gun that got shot was mine and it went off twice, nice. you, know, was, you know, and to come out and kind of out hunt the old timers was a was a pretty cool experience for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. when somebody asks when you're okay when you're when you're on a trailer on the road and you run into somebody they ask if you ever see anything do you tell the truth? Ah, uh, it depends, man. Like. <laughs> 
it, it depends. I mean, generally, I'll say like, hey, you know, it's, it's you know, we've seen some action last night. We won't, we'll never give them specific areas or yeah. Um, but no, I, I don't know. Like, I, I will lie how, through my teeth. Oh, I'm sure. I'm I sure, like, man. I I've told this story before, but the one time I've ran into a dude, I was hiking out of my elk spot because I had to. I had some uh, some uh, you know in, engagement that I had to. Uh, deal with that evening. So yeah. I was coming out in the afternoon. I had hunted the morning and this dude was hiking in and he was all geared up like full on like mountain backpack style, like ready to rock this guy. He's like, oh, is there any elk down in here? And I'm like, uh, no, nah, man, it's a bust. <laughs> 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 been hunting that spot every every September for the past handful of years. I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. total bust. Sorry. Sure. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> like, I've got an easy cop out for those situations. I'm like, no, nah, but I've seen some does over there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's cool, man. Like, I think uh, you know, if you're willing to strap, it just goes to show you that if you're willing to strap your boots on and you know get a bit sweaty, like you'll get into them for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, what's what's that old saying? Like, hunt the animal or hunt the land, not the animal. I That's don't know. so true. Yeah, yeah. No, you're yeah. totally right, man. You're totally it, right. It's it's funny and like um, living out in the Chilliwack Valley, it's it's proving to be true. It doesn't really matter where you go. There's animals everywhere. Yeah, definitely. You know, they are. Yeah. I got, dude, I live in I live in North Burnaby here, like right, <laughs> you know, right on the waterfront. And uh, you know, any Tuesday, if you want to see a black bear come down, like come down on garbage day, man, you'll see bears <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it's wild. It's 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 wild the the amount of wildlife that we have here in PC and um yeah, we're, we're like you said, we're super blessed. Yeah, man. And that's that's one of the sad things as well, you know, like especially in this like political climate when it comes to hunting and fishing and all these regulations and stuff, man. Like that's that's the thing I moved to Canada for, you know, and it's hard to see those little things get taken away. So the more, uh, you know, the more that we can do and the more hunters we can get involved in, in the mentorship, because right, even right now, man, like we're losing hunters on a daily basis. We're losing voices on a daily basis, you know, with people who are coming to the sport, getting bashed on and saying, no, that was a bad experience. I'm not going to go back and I take up something else instead. Yeah. You know, so what does that look like in 10, 15 years? Well, the opportunities for our kids still be here, you know? Yeah. And the, ans- the answer is maybe but not you know not as good as what we've had it you know yeah and i mean me and uh i can kind of speak for wacy a little bit here too me and wacy are all about like um kind of mitigating that that steep learning curve and trying to you know help guys like like with matt matt getting back into hunting here i said to matt like i can't help you become a a great accomplished sheep hunter or anything like that, but I can get you back going and get you current and we'll, we'll get a deer on the ground together for sure. You know, of course. And it's like, um, I think if guys are, are willing to do that, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a, a fundamental background or a fundamental understanding of what you're doing that you can pass on to guys. For sure. um, I think it's huge. Like if everybody could help one guy a year, that would be massive. Right. Yeah, definitely, man. And you know what? I would love to see even like, is there's tons of old dudes, right? Like there's tons of old timers, you know, that have a wealth of information and no one's listening to them. You yeah. know, like those old guys die every day and, and years and years of experience just evaporates into the universe, you know, like yeah. it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, so I think what I'm saying is, it's like, if you have a, you know, an experienced old guy, you know, or, or experienced <laughs> mentor, you know, even if it's not yourself, like get them and get them to get in touch with BHA, man. I'd love to chat with them and pair them up with some new guy, you know, yeah. or, you know, some new girl or, um, you know, whatever, like our, our membership comes from all different backgrounds and, you know, types of people like city folks and rural folks. So, uh, there's always someone who will want to learn, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. And like, like I say to you, you, you don't, you don't need to be, um, an expert to help somebody get going from ground zero. You know, it's like, um, I, I, I used to, um, you know, be a little uneasy about helping, um, guys get started. And then I was like, well, no, this is all I think about and all I do. And I, 
<laughs> cut cut a handful of tags every year. I, I can definitely get guys from ground zero into um, the space where they're finding some success and then it locks them in and they get addicted to hunting, right? That's oh, what dude. I want. Yeah, That's yeah. what I want. Like last year, my buddy Tommy, um, he had a bunch of uh, a bunch of years on his own, kind of trying to figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. And it was like, man, all it took was just a handful of phone conversations with the guy like he was right there and he was so kind of like man i'm on year four or year five or whatever it was Mm -hmm. of of not shooting and it's like um all it took was just some like um just some some guidance like hey man like this is what i would do i would pick one area and stick to it or i would do this or i would do that and then in the field a couple things you know like hey what does this mean what does that mean Mm -hmm. and you just pass that on and next thing you know boom first tag cut for sure man that's it and like how good does that feel to you as well for being the guy that got him there yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's almost uh, it's it's almost as good as shooting the animal yourself. You know, and harvesting the animal yourself. Even like, more so. Even more yeah. so. You don't and you don't want to take any credit or anything like that from the guy doing it or the or the gal doing it. But at the same time, it's like just knowing that you kind of help nudge somebody along and got them like got got them got them the a little bit of the tools that they needed to to complete the tasks that they were setting out for. Of I think course. it's just huge, man. It's huge. Yeah, man. It's massive. Right. And how, and how cool is it that you're now getting to do that with your oldest as well now? Oh yeah. 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 She's, uh, she's just, uh, she's an animal dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it's uh, every day she wakes up and asks if we're going fishing or hunting every single day. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's awesome. Like between between you and your experience, right? Like your immediate friend group with uh with you know like you know Wacy and Sky and Foth and all those guys. Like she is already super lucky, right? Like she's gonna be super advantaged when she seriously gets oh, into hunting for herself. Yeah, you know? she's uh, yeah, she's gonna be an animal. It's insane. She's yeah, she's yeah. Uh, she's all about fly fishing now. So. Oh, we, we get we get we can thank Matt for that one. So yeah, yeah, you, I can pick her up a fly rod. It's, it's okay. I, we 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 got her. We got her covered now. Yeah, sweet oh, man. man. She's 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 dialed. So yeah, and she's no, been catching she's been catching fish on that other little rod as well. Like. Yeah, we've been killing not killing, but we've been catching smallmouth. Um, kind of almost not every night, but every night we can sneak out. So cool, man. So cool. You're in, you're in a good spot. Well, yeah. I mean, even even at that, like my kid, she just turned one, and yeah. uh, every single morning, she comes running up to us kind of before school with the good luck hunter books. Uh, yeah, I ordered those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't come yet, but you, you'll see, man. Like my my baby loves it. Man, she loves the pictures of the deer and the you know and the pheasants and stuff and all. Oh that. Yeah. yeah, she yeah she loves it, man. It's mm-hmm. super cute. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's it's. I think it's everything we can do to get the next gen generation involved or um mm-hmm. help help nudge along guys that are struggling and um like i say not not take any credit for what they accomplish but it does make you feel good for sure when you can help them out of course man and the thing is too like we're, we're we don't even know everything ourselves you oh know, we, no no, that's no, no. i said that to matt matt last night we were talking about a hunt that we're planning and i was like i said matt like i'm by no means an expert in in the, inside this space like you are with fly fishing and fishing in general but yeah. i can uh i can mitigate the learning curve a little bit so of course man of course and i mean yeah. matt, matt, matt does that for a living right like he yeah. you know he's been a guide for years and you know he runs the store and you know sells gear like he is like you said he's an expert yeah but I would, and, it's a, I would, and it's a family business too which is cool for sure yeah yeah exactly and i, but I wouldn't downplay like someone who does it as a hobbies uh experience either you know like when you're co- when you're coming at it from a hobby sp- perspective and you love the sport you know like there's you're still learning a lot that can be passed on yeah you know oh but. absolutely yeah for sure i mean yeah. i uh i i i think us guys that are passionate about hunting are, are we're, we're the guys that are going to keep it going right for sure man it's an addiction man i almost feel bad getting people into the sport so i'm like <laughs> oh shit like <laughs> How much money you got? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> How understanding is your wife? 
she no, she's really understanding. She's been awesome. Man. Like she, she's she's encouraged. Um, she's encouraged that, and I, I can't say she's ever you know not let me go and do something super rad. You know, that's awesome. It, yeah, she's great. Yeah. She's great. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, she's she's kind of into it too as well. You know, like more the the coming coming to the river and chilling out kind of thing. Well, I uh, you know throw the line in and make a fool of myself. Uh, yeah dude that's the best <laughs> yeah no she's super supportive and and she's also super supportive of us getting Peyton, and my daughter into it as well so that's rad yeah. okay well let's let's plug everything here again and let's uh sure. let let people know where they can find you how they can sign up to bha and um all that kind of stuff let's let's do all that and uh let, let's uh let's cap this one here and then I, i'd love to have you back on in, in the middle of the season to chat more about your your personal hunting stuff sure and, uh, maybe yeah. maybe we'll get a get like a uh bha check in here in a few months too yeah yeah that would be rad you yeah, know super cool and uh yeah definitely we'll we'll get some get the links here so for for people that want to want to check out bha uh region two and and the other regions specifically i would say like the best place to kind of keep and uh, keep your ear on what we're doing is on instagram for sure it's at backcountry hunters bc um if you wanted to sign up for a membership you can do it there's a uh, backcountry hunters bc.org we have our own website up here in canada that's under development now uh so you can either go on there or you can go sign up on the us website and there's some perks to both I think with uh, with the us website you get some free swag and stuff but uh yeah you can go at backcountry hunters I think it's backcountryhunters.org. We, is the, we, is that we want folks to sign up on the BA, BC website. Then, we, we, we want, yeah, we want people to stay up on the B, BC website because it's a bit easier for us. The to money keep, stays up here. The money, the money stays up here. Yeah. That's, so, and that's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then if you wanted to check me out on Instagram or ping me a message, it's at Western Gilly. Um, you can yeah message me on here if you were interested in getting signed up or wanted to come and check something out and we'd be happy to or book a sturgeon up. trip or book a sturgeon well yeah yeah or book a sturgeon trip yeah like yeah uh, that's that's for pacific angler as well if yeah. you wanted to check us out on that uh it's at pacific angler sport fishing for the charter site and then just at pacific angler for the uh retail store and the other stuff that we Man, do I'm, I'm actually just blown away by pacific angler like um I like the, the crew that is there, like, like Taylor, Sterling, Matt. Um, yeah, dude. it's just like, it's a free, you walk in there and it's a freaking murderer's row. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, who, who, who's the other cat? Um, Jordan. Like, yeah. Jordan. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, a, just a bunch of absolute animals on the water. And they're just like, you have any question those guys know. Oh, dude, yeah, it's crazy. We're, we're uh, some someday we might start our own podcast and have those guys on because they've all got stories. You oh know, yeah, like, I, 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 I part of me really wants to just start doing fishing podcasts to ask those guys questions. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know enough about fishing, so yeah, yeah, no, uh, we, we want to get something to set up like Matt that, can host it or something, and we just we great. just bring in like awesome guides throughout like from out throughout bc yeah. and stuff to no. tell funny you know stories it's, and stuff it's so cool man it's like i i i i think that uh everybody should know that's a family owned and run business and mm -hmm. you know uh jason and matt and uh every, everybody over there is just wicked yeah yeah like the whole the whole uh yeah it's very much a family vibe and you know, everybody in the store is super close. Now, like this this trip that I'm going on on Friday here for this interior lake fishing trip, that's one of the guys from the store that invited me. Yeah, you know, deadly. so yeah, I'm getting a, a crash course myself here as well. <laughs> okay, wicked. Well, everybody, uh, go check out Lee. Go see what's up with BHA and do your thing. Appreciate it, man. It was uh, it was awesome. We finally got to do this. Appreciate it, Ty. Yeah, man. We'll we'll do another one soon, bro. Oh man. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. You can follow us on Instagram at Wilderness Locals. If you want to support the podcast, please check out the gear, articles, and whatever else we're up to on the website at www.wildernesslocals.net.